Fellow has just announced the second generation of their incredibly popular grinder, the Ode. And I just so happen to have one right here. So in today's video, I'll be doing sort of a live unboxing of this, talking about the new features of this grinder, and then talking about whether it is a worthwhile upgrade if you currently have the first generation Ode, but then also if you should be getting this one instead of the first generation if you're buying a new grinder. One of the main features of this grinder is that it comes standard with the second generation burr set from Fellow, which if you're unfamiliar, when the Ode first came out, people were a little unhappy with the burrs that came stock in the grinder. They just weren't grinding quite fine enough for most pour overs. And so Fellow has been working for the last year or two on developing this new burr set, which they announced about a month ago. Now I wanna do a whole video comparing the second gen burrs to both the first gen and the upgraded SSP burrs, both of which I have in grinders over here. But since that's such a big topic, I'm gonna to be releasing a whole nother video right after this one, talking about the three different types of burrs, their differences, and which ones are worth it. So after watching this, be sure to check out that review on all of the burrs. usual little guides here. That looks like it. Now really quick, to be totally transparent up front, Fellow did send me this grinder in exchange for making a review video about it. However, they don't have any say in what I talk about in this video. They aren't going to see this before it goes live. So these are all my own opinions, but just so you know up front that they did send me this grinder to review. Now probably the only thing that really looks different right away is the hopper up here. This grinder has an increased 100 gram capacity in its hopper versus the original just had 80 grams. So here's the original. This is an 80 gram capacity and then here we have the 100 gram capacity, which I'm not really sure how many people were complaining about the capacity of the hopper, but it's not a downside to have a little more capacity, so I'm fine with that. Otherwise, on the outside, these grinders pretty much look identical. This new catcher feels a little bit heavier and a little bit nicer than the old one, but I don't know if that's just because this is used. Now the other big difference besides the generation two burrs that comes standard in this one is that Fellow has talked about an anti-static technology that they've thrown in the grinder, which is one of my biggest complaints about the Ode now that I've used it for a while is that it does make quite a bit of a mess. Even with the knocker on the side there, you get quite a bit of static buildup. You have grounds kind of everywhere after you use it a little annoying. So now that we've looked at all of the obvious external features that are a little bit different, I'm going to grind some coffee through here. I'm going to put a few pounds through just to pre-season the burrs a little bit, and then we'll look at the static. We'll brew a cup of coffee. We'll talk about it, and then we'll do a quick little comparison between the burrs, but not as much of a deep dive as I will in a whole separate video here. I have some old coffee here that I can pour through the grinder and season the burrs. Don't worry, it was probably going to be thrown out anyways, so we'll put it to at least some good use here. And that was terrible. Jesus. Right away, I am noticing that usually I would see a lot of static buildup down here. And I mean, there was a little retention there, but there is no build up down here. So I'll do a little comparison later showing the static difference, but already that is a good sign that we're not having a lot of that. All right, so I've run a few pounds through this grinder, seasoned the burrs a little bit, and now we'll take a look at the increased hopper capacity, how much you can fit up there, and then also the anti-static technology that is in this grinder. We'll be comparing them just as they are standard, and then we'll be adding uh, some water to the beans before grinding and seeing how that differs between the two. There's 80 grams. New one is 100 grams. Now I'll grind the coffee and we'll do a little comparison between the static. 
can see that there's some coffee buildup along the rim of the cup down here. And then I'll show a close up of what's going on down here and you can see a lot of static buildup around the opening of the grinder into the cup. So now let's grind through here and we'll compare the two. You can see that the lid is completely clean. We have no coffee right there. If we take a look underneath here, not very much coffee at all, especially compared to the original. Pretty much no static buildup. So honestly, one fellow reached out to me and said that there was an anti-static technology in the new grinder. Wasn't really sure what that would mean and if it would be worth it. With the frustration of the mess that happens with the Generation 1 grinder, I think that that is a huge improvement. But to really test that out, let's add some water drops into the coffee before grinding and we'll test that using the WDT technique. So if you're unfamiliar with the WDT technique, basically people just found out that if you add a little bit of water around the beans before they're ground, that'll eliminate a lot of the static buildup in the grinder. So you can do it a couple of ways. You can either get just like a spoon, run it through a sink really quick and then stir the coffee beans, or you can use a little spritzer like this and just give the beans a quick spray before you put them through the grinder. Make sure to shake them out really well and don't use too much water, otherwise they could stick and ruin the grinder a little bit. So I've got 20 grams here that I'm not gonna use the WDT technique. And then 20 grams here that I will spray with a little bit of water. Give that a nice shake. And let's see how they do. So the new generation, no static buildup here. If we look at the old generation with the WDT, you can see there are still grounds along the outside of the cup. There's definitely still grounds underneath here. So all that being said, one of my biggest issues with the original Ode was that static buildup. It led to quite the mess. I was having to clean it up quite a bit. So having that anti-static technology and the new generation is a huge bonus for me. Now the last thing I wanna do for this video is a quick taste test comparing the two grinders. Like I've mentioned, I'm gonna be doing a completely separate video comparing all the burr options available for this grinder. And we'll be diving a little bit deeper into tasting and extraction levels and a whole mess of other things there. But at least for now, I wanna do just a quick taste test. My initial impressions using this grinder, I'm gonna compare it to the current grinder that I am used to using, which uses the SSP upgraded burrs, I think it'll be a little bit more of a fair comparison with the burrs. And I'm just more familiar with the coffee that I get out of this one. So I'm gonna be making a cup with each of these using the same coffee, same pour over method and everything, doing a direct comparison, talking about the taste differences. So I'm gonna get brewing this natural process Brazil that I use in a recent video on experimental processing methods and then we'll talk about the taste. All right, so I have two cups brewed here, one from each grinder. Now from Fellow's website, they have taste comparisons between the burrs. For the SSPs, they say extreme clarity with intense flavor separation. With the generation two burrs, they say medium clarity with a huge emphasis on body and sweetness. So I'm gonna taste these coffees and tell you at least what I think. Cheers. So I definitely can taste that difference between the two grinders. The coffee coming from the SSP burrs has a lot more acidity. It's a little bit more sweeter. The flavors are definitely more clear than those coming out of the generation two burrs. This coffee is a little more complex. It has more body and depth to it. So I would say that Fellow's comparison on their website is pretty accurate. The SSP burrs give you a lot of clarity, a lot of sweetness, more acidity. The generation two burrs are gonna give you more body, more depth, more complexity to the coffee. So neither one is necessarily better than the other, but there definitely is a difference. And we're gonna dive way more into that in the other video comparing all three burr sets. Now the biggest thing I wanted to look at in this video is just how this grinder compares to the generation one version. Looking at it from the outside and just looking at a spec sheet, there is not much difference. They kind of just release a new grinder 
and said that we're gonna make the generation two burrs stock in this grinder. Oh, and there's a couple other things that might be useful, meaning the increased hopper capacity and then the anti-static technology. At least when I'm making this video, the MSRP of the generation two grinder is 345 US dollars versus if you were to buy this grinder with the standard original burr set, it is $299. Now you can buy the generation two burrs for an additional $80 and you would have to add those on yourself to this original grinder. And so if you buy the generation two, you're basically saving $35 with those new burrs. And then you're also getting the anti-static and the larger capacity. Now, the other question to look at is, okay, I already have the generation one. Is it worth upgrading to the generation two? That I would say is a little bit less clear. If you're someone that you already wanted to upgrade your grinder, and you like the ode a lot, but maybe there were a couple things that you wish were different, the generation two might be something that you want to look at. However, if you are someone that already has the ode and you are happy with it, I wouldn't necessarily say that these changes to the generation two are worth it to completely upgrade to this new grinder. So those are all of my initial impressions with the new fellow O generation two. I am surprised with the anti-static technology. I wasn't really sure what to expect there, but so far it is working really great. The increased hopper capacity doesn't really do that much for me, but it's not a downside. And so far I am liking the new generation of burrs, but like I keep saying, we'll explore that more in another video. I hope this video was helpful for you. Be sure to check out the next video looking at all the different burrs available for the fellow Ode. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy brewing.